I'll tell you what I'm most worried about with the state of things, the state of the economy. It's debt. Because debt is what fuels our entire world, basically. You look at all the spending and all the money that's flowing around right now, keeping our economy zooming along, booming for the past 10 years, the 10 most uh, basically impressive years of our economic history. A lot of it has to do with debt. A friend of mine and I were on the phone here just a few minutes ago, actually, and he said, well, I think things are probably going to basically pop right back to normal because um, the money, all, all the money in our economy can't just disappear, can't just go away. And um, when you dive into that and you think about where the money is really coming from as people spend more money and uh, you know, make more money and the economy grows and the stocks become worth more money, it's really debt is the thing. It's not real money. When I bought this house right here two years ago, I only put 20% down when I bought it. That means 80% of the money that came from this growth and this big economic boom of people buying things was debt. For me, it was debt. A lot of other people, everything they buy is debt. The average, my, my buddy's a loan officer, he said the average home that he finances, people put less than 5% down. So it's not real money, it's debt. It's debt that's being loaned by the Fed to banks and then to Americans. Um, it's no different in real estate. With my self-storage facility, we had uh, we, in 2017, we convinced a bank to give us $2 million to build a $2.5 million self-storage facility. So yeah, we had a little bit of cash, but again, the majority was debt. It's the same thing everywhere. All Americans, paycheck to paycheck, very few have any money at all saved up. You look at um, the average American has enough money in the checking account to basically pay less than $300 surprise expense or they go to debt. And that's pretty mind-boggling to me. So what I'm really worried about here as the economy tightens up and as things change is a debt crisis happening. And what do I mean by debt crisis? I mean as people can't make payments, as people request mortgage forbearance. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a fire going right here. So you guys want to see what I'm up to. Quarantine life, right? As people request forbearance as people can't pay their debts, um, loaning gets more risky. So banks require a higher mortgage rate to um, write the loans. I'll tell you what this has to do with business in just a second, but an example of this is about three weeks ago, again, the same buddy who's a, a loan officer, he writes home loans for people. He said it was a big panic in the industry a couple weeks ago because Freddie and Fanny stopped buying loans. It's like we'd write the loans, we'd lock in the rates, we'd qualify the buyers, and then when it came time to finance the close of the house, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac said, no, we don't want this loan, we don't want to buy it, it's too risky, we're not buying it. And that's because they had a really good feeling, a hunch, and they ended up being right, that a lot of people were not going to pay their mortgage. Let's say there's 100 houses in this neighborhood, there's my house, there's 100 houses in this neighborhood, you can see behind me. They're about $300,000 each. Pretty low cost of living here and pretty nice house for $300,000. There's 100 here. Let's say every person is uh, got a big home loan. So let's, let's, let's say there's $30 million worth of loans. That's $300,000 per house. Obviously a lot less than that because a lot of houses are paid off. A lot of people did put 20% down like me. But let's for whole numbers, I'll say $30 million worth of debt on this, on this neighborhood, 100 loans. So every month, people have to pay $2,000. That's principal and interest. Well, April 1st, 10% of the people in my neighborhood didn't pay. So 10 out of the 100 people didn't pay their loans, didn't pay their notes, lost their jobs, or requesting forbearance, called their loan officer. And what that does is it makes the home loans more risky. It makes the people who are writing the home loans need a higher interest rate to make that loan work. Well, the Fed lowered the rate, but still wasn't quite worth it. So Fetty and Franny said, uh, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae said, no, we're not buying this mortgage-backed security. You can find somebody else to try to buy this loan. And they couldn't. So the government had to step in and buy the loans. 
which is absolutely insane. The government stepping in to finance the home loans. They're already changing underwriting in a severe way. To buy a home used to be a 580 credit score was the minimum for Freddie, uh, Freddie and Fannie to buy the loan. Now it's 620. They just raised it. Um, the employment check was 10 days before closing. Now it's one day before closing. So my friend was writing all these loans and then some of them were dying at the table. People were not able to actually close the loans. People weren't able to get the stuff. And what does this have to do with business? What does this have to do with business? Well, everything, because debt is what fuels the entire economy. People getting debt in the form of credit cards, um, real estate debt, any kind of debt, people buying the debt is what moves the economy. So when you're looking at a, this, this is a really good example right here, right behind me. This guy, this developer is building this house right here in my neighborhood. He probably has super expensive bridge debt right now to finance that build. Meaning seven, eight percent short term loan, 12 month loan, because he's gonna buy it, he's gonna build it, and then he's gonna sell it. Well, now less people can get qualified for loans because the credit score requirements went up, the interest rates went up, it gets more expensive, a lot of people are laid off. He can't sell that house for more than he bought, than more than he paid to build it. So his short term debt's gonna mature, he's gonna need to roll over into long-term loans or go bankrupt or pay for it himself or do whatever he has to do to try to get by. A lot of people go bankrupt because they build a big house like that and the debt culture changes. Banks are changing their underwriting. Right? What do I mean by that when a bank changes its underwriting? A bank, every deal, every, every transaction that they finance, every loan that they write, they have underwriting for it. Meaning, these are the parameters that I need this loan borrower, this borrower, the person who's borrowing the money to hit before I am willing to take on the risk to finance this loan. Well, the parameters change. When things get risky, when things get uncertain, when people stop paying their mortgage, things change and it gets more risky, rate goes up, the underwriting gets more intense, it gets harder and harder to get a loan. So it's crazy stuff and that's what's gonna basically stop the money from flowing around because so many people are spending and buying and making the economy flow by on borrowed money nobody has their own cash they're all leveraged to the hilt everybody spends more money than they more money than they make it's just a wild culture right now and if the debt gets cut off if student loans get harder to get if house loans gets harder to get if business loans get harder to get everything slows down everything stops so the government steps in right the government is already playing a huge role in uh small business loans that's why the sba exists because small business loans are so risky that the government or the private industries never want to write and underwrite these loans they'd be eight or nine ten percent interest to even make it happen so the sba comes in and guarantees these loans um through the government the government guarantees the loan so that the bank doesn't need to take the risk so that they'll go ahead and write it Man, that's the only way that this debt crisis can really be avoided here is if the government comes in and backs up and pays all these loans. But I don't see that happening. So as debt gets harder to get, it's harder for the average Joe to buy that house. It's harder for the average Joe to buy this house. It's harder for the average Joe to buy the house I bought. Which makes the value of the house go down, which makes uh, the economy slow down, makes people stop spending money because they can't get the debt, they can't get the credit card debt, they can't... Um, secure the money needed to buy things. The developers can't afford to build houses like this because the bridge loans are harder to get. And just, it's a vicious, vicious cycle. So that's what I'm most worried about. How does it affect business? It all trickles down to business. The money in people's wallets that goes out the door. It's a, it's a crazy thing. I mean, the average American business had 14 days. The average restaurant, I think, had 14 days cash in the bank. And that's after the six, six of the most amazing years that our economy's ever had of growth, of spending, of people eating at restaurants. That's gonna change. So what makes a lender think that uh, banks are gonna, or that these small business owners, these restaurants are gonna be able to pay this money back that they're loaning them? They're likely not, right? Um, so that's what I'm most worried about.